Searching Egypt for clues of mankind's origin has been difficult at best, yet we find clues millennia of time later, some 2,000 years, and it seems that something very important to mankind was forgotten and should not have been and became lost. History became legend, legend became myth, and it takes well over 2,000 years before the fog lifts and we start to discover pieces of the puzzle of man. The pyramids sit on a geographic center of the actual continent over here. Whether that's coincidence or not, mankind may never know. But at this area, there are six sacred sites. Today we're looking at the top one here of Abu Rawash. Now, it's gouged into the ground here, and it's like the bottom end of a pyramid that no longer exists, with perfect walls and megalithic stone structure, and people wonder why. Uh, you, you know that everyone knows the pyramids of Giza and the Great Pyramids, but those show us one face, one bit in time of these Egyptians, and we have to look through all of these different sites here, like Abu Ghraib, which is somewhat lost in the desert out here and really not looked in too much. You can tell it's much larger than what has been excavated and only a portion has been done so. Just like at Abu Sir, where there are more questions and answers and more area that's left to be excavated than has been even before. And looking at Saqqara, I want you to notice something as we come in here. Looking at Saqqara, can you see this line that appears to run down here and back up? That seems to be an ancient causeway of some type. It's a rift. It's not just a, a line of dunes or something along that nature. And there's a lot more of these sites in the area surrounding them that hasn't been excavated at all. Merely we're just scratching the surface on each one at these times. So here's the Great Step Pyramids, and you can see a transition, but are all the pyramids indeed actually step pyramids that have been gone back over and had a facade put on them, where there are red pyramids, white pyramids like the Great Pyramids, and even black covered basalt pyramids, like this, the Red Pyramid here, and each one having a symbology that means something. Indeed, they had knowledge that people don't usually look at so much, like, does this not look like the Dendera battery and its wires coming down to hook up to three things? Is, are, are they utilizing electricity in some way we're not aware of, and it's not necessarily written on the walls in plain sight? Perhaps it's secrets that they had that they didn't want to have on the walls. It was passed down through time through priests and things and not something that was open and known in such a way. Only those that were supposed to be in knowledge were known. You know, the alignment of Orion on this has been shown for a long time and how it relates to it in the sky and as above, so below. But there's so much we don't know and piecing together what we do know, coming up with conclusions uh, you know, you're, you're led to believe that they're somewhat primitive, yet you find calculations and things that they're doing here that seem way beyond their measure. When you look at the normal place here of Egypt, there's a Canaanite hound, and uh, take a trip out to these places and see what they actually look like and looking through the locals and there's something that's familiar. These sites seem to be just a, a mound and this isn't what makes this one different is it's up on a hill and uh, if you look down on it here in a 3D view and you can see Abu Rawash and how it's built and it's just gouged into the ground here in a perfect line set in but you, do you see that inset that's there here you can actually look out and see the other pyramids in the distance from this giant mountain which had to have been sacred in, in some you know in, in earlier times 
And here we see this pit that's dug in that was actually shown in, I believe, a few of the old ancient Egyptian movies. Building techniques are shown here with megalithic blocks and insets that look extremely pyramidic, yet there are walls that are built in here that are using just odd-shaped rocks in together, and again, giant rocks, and then megalithic blocks built into the bottom of them, and some very weird ooh parts here, where you can see the shape of this and how arched it is, and how smooth that this the surface is on this, and where you can kind of clearly see that it's been machined, and where they started the machining at and stopped and it has a clear delineated line here where it actually does stop and over here again this showing you like a radial cut and it is arched in or convex like the back of your glasses and uh, for what purpose would this you know serve here whenever you look at this thing you can see it's very convex and there's a few types of stone here that come from 500 miles away, like this pink granite, like what was shown there. There are holes. Again, the shape on this thing and the convex set of it just almost doesn't make sense to the to the naked eye here. This would have to have been cut on something radial with a 30-foot circumference. And that doesn't make good logical sense. This pink granite from 500 miles away in core samples. And like this end set, perfect circle here at the Temple of the Sun some things show a different level of architecture than we're even almost capable of today and the difficulty it would have to have been back then is phenomenal now coming down into this pit you can see looking down into it and there are huge megalithic blocks you can see the side edging here and uh, for scale you can see her size and I want to point out here the size of these megalithic blocks that are inset across the bottom here right that they've gotten down to and pried up the layer that was above them that was smaller blocks than that and people dug down through thinking that there was a there's got to be a, a hidden place and stuff in there but they never really found it and they couldn't lift up the rest of the blocks that were so huge and uh one thing of note here, around on the side, there's a cave that's inside of here. And right next to the cave, in the edge, there's a pit that's dug down quite deep. You don't get much information from archaeologists on that either. And uh, it looks like there's a uh, fire, but nobody can really go through the trouble of dating that carbon and tell you what it was. Here's how it looks from up top, and you can see how it's leveled off that there could have been a pyramid there. So everybody's familiar with um, some of the better places, but this is Abu Rawash, and it is the most northern point of having pyramids. And you can see how far it was off. And from Abu Rawash, you see Giza. And here is the delineation that comes here. And in that, you can kind of see that they are uh, about equidistant away from the Nile here. And uh, there are beliefs that they diverted the Nile with canal works. And we'll get into that here shortly. But uh, so this is what's known as the line of peace. And it's all of the great pyramid sites that are there. And indeed, there are many more that are still hidden in the desert. But here is the Nile and where you would have run canal works all the way up to the pyramids in olden times like this and to where it would lead you up to each one of the pyramids, many of them six to eight miles away from the current Nile location. Indeed, if it did run there, and it seems like it did, and there are also showings of a great diversion that was run across and, and through, almost like an uh, extra overflow. If there was to be a giant flood, this would kick in and help to divert some of the water, but also it ran around the pyramids and in front of them much closer and so it seems like they would have utilized that when they were doing building and then clog it back off but of course it could be 
broken back through at a time of great flood and alleviate right when things got real bad. And you look out from this top plane here and how it's all been pretty much flattened. And there are the ancient riverbed that I was talking about that runs through here, right? And you can see this, how it's set in here, and that line runs all the way up and through, and indeed it arcs back over and then into the green area and becomes lost. And it looks like it's been buried enough to where you really can't see it. It almost looks like it's one of the causeways, but whenever you investigate it, it actually is a dip in the land where there would have been an ancient riverbed that they probably you know, dug out, and they would use their boats with the rocks on them to build the pyramids and bring them all the way up here. The problem we have with the theory, though, on all of this, where it kind of busts the theory where everybody believes that they, you know, they drug the stones up, the pyramids, and then lifted them and did all that. This shows you that they would have had to drug it up a mountain. And it has an ancient causeway up here up top that comes out of it that arches back and into that riverbed. So it shows you where they would have angled up coming up the mountain at. And indeed, there are temples back over here and back over here that really haven't been excavated well that are next to the escarpment itself. And it looks like it's a much bigger ground than it ever really was. But Abu Rawash also shows these neat walls that are in there. Again, the pyramid view. You can almost see the haze that holds above the city that's actually below your height. It's kind of neat a view there, but... You're seeing it from this mountain. And this is a live shot that's here. And, oh, there's been some wild dog or, oh, it's a Canaanite hound, just like what would have been back in the time. And here's one of these causeways when you lead back down and go from here towards Giza. And you see people and the locals. And you can see Giza coming up in the distance. And indeed, you're going downhill the whole way and across over to here. And then you can see it just up the street. So here at Giza, whenever you take a good look at it, um, here's a helicopter viewpoint of it, which is quite striking. You can tell it's kind of up on a hill in an escarpment there itself, which guards it somewhat from flooding and uh, is on higher ground. Just to look up at the top of it and just uh, to, to wonder at the size of it, you know, a man's artificial mountain was built here out of over 2.4 million blocks and it makes you wonder if we're looking not in the right place but in the right way indeed it's up here on a hill the sphinx in the foreground here and an oddity can be found whenever one frequents the local pizza hut believe it or not <laughs> when you're sitting here it seems like there used to be some temple that would have been just over your right shoulder and a little bit farther back perhaps another hundred yards or so that's no longer existing and is up under housing and places that had long been destroyed. But people said it didn't go by the Sphinx because of trying to avoid it. But that causeway lines up whenever you see it with the sun rising and setting. And from this pizza hut, the sun would set between these two pyramids through summer. And in winter time, it would actually come up straight on that causeway from this point that you're looking at and then land right in between the two pyramids there. And indeed, just over your right shoulder would be the place for it to happen in the convergent point of this, which actually points towards nothing now because it's been all covered up over time. But perhaps we're just looking in the wrong way sometimes. Many other pyramids have complexes that look like this. And so we need to investigate around each one of these to see if they have complexes like this itself and try to glean more information out of it. And we need to do it el rapido and not something that is slowed down by the Egyptian government so bad. Clearly there are thousands of Egyptologists that would love to get a, a chance at something. Perhaps there's something that could be given a chance in all these temples that haven't been really explored over time. Okay, so there's Abu Ruwash. This is the symbol for Ruah and Ruash. 
And in the Bible, it is said that the face of God hovered over the face of the water and brought about creation. Here we see that Ru is this, in symbol of a bird, somewhat in landing, or it looks like a freaking spaceship, like lost in space. Ah is the start of aqua and water. Ah, wa, water. And here we see Ru over the ah. And what's broken off down here is plants and papyrus and fleur-de-lis that you can see sticking up just slightly. And the representation of the rosette. And this indeed dates to 2600 BC. But can be seen quite a few times. Many people say this is, you see this the other way around, the upside down of it quite often. And in the bullhorns and the setting of the sun, and what you don't see is this, almost an eclipsing idea and the sun is very much smaller than the moon and yet this is the symbol of Ruach and this is Ruach and Ruach is known in the Bible as being the wind of God uh, it's experienced by a few different prophets over time in Ezekiel's wheel whenever he comes down in what comes out to be some odd spaceship is indeed something that is described as the Ruach of God Ruash. So Abu Ruash have something extremely similar to that. There are other similarities with a few other the pyramids that are available for us to look at that actually have been somewhat excavated, although somewhat neglected. So here's another view inside, and I just wanted to make note again of that secondary pit where what we have is a line on the wall. It's pretty much the height of this, which might make that there was a false floor that was in here at one time, perhaps made of timbers, maybe Lebanon cedars itself, that exactly fit into here and let, would let you walk around on this and or go up under it as being one or two levels. And I don't know if it quite shows up in the picture, but I think it does. Right there is another ledging system that goes up to a higher level, which equals up to a rib that goes around the top up there too. And so you have some type of oddity that goes with that. You can see the megalithic blocks that this is built out of. The sides is more of a brickwork, but each one of these bricks is 450 pounds, and this thing right here is over a ton. So there are many uh, people who have come out with uh, different um, theories on this and information out on it, and I don't want to show you a bunch of weird, odd ones and everything and do nothing but get you confused, but you ought to look into this. And here's one interesting one. Uh, a pyramid that looks exactly like this is a pyramid of El Arian, right? The Aryan pyramid. And it uh, was dug up years ago. Now it's one that's been hidden. I've made a video on it. CFAPS has made a video on it. Bright Insights made a video on it. And a few other people have made videos on this itself. Uh, it seems now it seems to be somewhat of a cover-up, but um, this tub that's built into here is in that pink granite, and indeed all this is from hundreds of miles away that are brought in. And if you look at the size of these slabs and the thickness of them, it just makes almost no sense to the mind. Now, they were all pried apart by all these people here trying to find another hidden passageway if perhaps they found one, even dug into the wall the hole that's back here that you see, but... This is the lid to the tub looking device here that is totally polished. It was uh, a convex, totally polished surface, perhaps done in somewhat like the way the other one was done, but in a very much deeper scallop, making it look like a gazing pool. Indeed, they thought it was a gazing pool. Perhaps people would sit here at night and, and watch for um, earthquake movements and things like that. They would gaze upon it and have a reflection of it up into the sky rather than looking directly at the stars um, because it would be a reflecting pool, much like in uh, Lord of the Rings where they look into that and they get visions into a reflecting pool. There's all types of con conjecture about it, but these knobs right here apparently help you to lift this thing up and put it on this lid. And whenever you do, this thing is totally flat 
and there's a recess built up into here to where it fits on it like a jar lid which is again amazing like hermetically sealing the thing and so it's just a, this just a storehouse of water and if it was you made it just about impossible to get in and out this took quite a few people to lift up you don't just put one on each side and pick it up like a casket uh, this thing is far too much tonnage going on it would required quite a bit of modern machinery and a bunch of ropes and pulleys and things and blocks and tackle that really weren't available at that time now here again is now here again is that ribbing that runs around and shows you there could have been a secondary level here uh, one more time I just want to make note of how thick these blocks are and that they had gotten them out you know supposedly they cut them up to pieces and pulled them out but they had gotten these blocks out to see if there was something below it but uh, should have never really been allowed to do that or if they did then they were gonna have to put it back together and uh, Humpty Dumpty couldn't put it back together again so a few other interesting things here's looking into that L Arion again and it's a kind of a terrible picture but you can see that ribbing that's there that would be at that lower level and here you see it again and here's a sketch of the complex apparently back in the late 1700s and here you can see a guide that came with him and is glad to probably get a chance to sit down looking at the shadows and the way it looks it's early afternoon perhaps or morning coming into noon and uh probably pretty dang hot right there and everything but he's about to make a bunch of different sketches on it I don't know who the exact artist is on this I believe it's a JJ Downey or JJ something but uh, this shows you the way that it used to look and then from this point till now it's been pilfered for a lot of the stone that led up to it so not only was it up on a mountain but then it had its own giant escarpment like this so often more questions than the answers, but at least you get to find yourself a little bit closer to a possibility um, that uh, makes more sense. Here, here's that causeway that I was talking about that actually aims right at Pizza Hut. <laughs> and uh, here, and again the other causeway on the other side, and you can see how the sun sets between each one, and perhaps those also delineated a marker. We're just like Stonehenge, you would see where it's going to rise and fall at. And when you started seeing it go back the other way, you could denote that time and then get a good idea when all the seasons were coming, when the Nile flood was coming, all of those things. You know, they watched for Sirius and the Sirius star cluster, and it itself would go down right at the very end before spring turned back up for about 70 to 72 days and then it would rise up and once you started to see it again you could expect the floods at any time and so um you know april flowers bring may showers or uh, april showers bring may flowers sorry <laughs> so uh that's almost like there would be a telltale calendar set into it so the pyramids were more than we thought before too with just that simplistic type thing I wonder if there's any way for them to figure out the pinpoint of where the temple used to be, but indeed anything that's over there had all been torn down a long time ago in the stonework used for things perhaps hundreds of years ago before anybody really got a want to look at Egypt, which is somewhat of a newer thing. Mankind started looking at history not too long after the Greeks, and it became a phenomenon after the Rena Renaissance time, and so now we're trying to peer back now and see the actual reality of it all sometimes it's hard to look that far back whenever again some things that were not supposed to have been forgotten were lost like share and subscribe guys we'll look at a few more of these uh, pyramids that are on that line there and uh, show you the differences between them uniqueness and things that point towards uh, different perspective on Egypt itself and perhaps mankind's origins. Peace.